Hey tech enthusiasts, welcome to yet another informative video from Simply Learn. Imagine you are managing an online store. You need to handle day-to-day -day transactions, analyze sales trends over the past year, and store massive amounts of raw customer feedback from social media. How do you manage all this data efficiently? This is where databases, data warehouses, and data lakes come into play. I'm pretty sure most of you are well aware of what a database is. A database is a system that stores and organizes data in a structured way, using rows and columns, making it easy to access, manage, and update information. Now, if data can be stored and managed in databases, then what is a data warehouse and a data lake? And why do we need them? So in this video, I will give you a clear understanding of what a database, data warehouse, and data lake is with examples. How are they different from each other and what factors to consider before choosing amongst the three. So let's jump in. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before we begin, if you are interested in getting certified in cloud, check out Simply Learn's Cloud Architect Certification Program. Build expertise in AWS, Microsoft Azure, and GCP with our Cloud Architect Certification course. Plus, we have included an exam voucher for any one Azure course, so you can get certified hassle-free. Gain access to official AWS authored self-learning content and master the ins and outs of cloud architectural principles. Learn how to design and deploy scalable services on various cloud platforms all in one comprehensive course. Let's build your cloud expertise together. So let's get started. So what is a database? A database is essentially a structured collection of data or information that is stored electronically. It serves as a centralized repository where data is organized in a systematic way often using tables, rows, and columns. So the primary function of a database is to support online transaction processing, or OLTP, which means it handles the real-time transactions and operations of businesses or applications. So behind the scenes, a database management system, or DBMS, manages the database, ensuring data is stored securely and efficiently. So the DBMS also allows users and applications to interact with the data through queries, updates, and modifications. So in common usage, the term database can refer both to the actual data repository and the software system or DBMS that manages it, providing a seamless interface between users and their stored information. Now, there are two types of databases. Relational databases store data in structured tables with fixed rows and columns. This structured approach makes them ideal for applications requiring strong data consistency and complex querying capabilities. On the other hand, non-relational databases often refer to as NoSQL databases, offer more flexibility by accommodating various data models. So these include JSON for semi-structured data, BSON, key value pairs for simple data retrieval, tables with dynamic columns for evolving schemas, and graph databases using nodes and edges for connected data relationships. So some of the examples of databases are Oracle, MySQL, and PostgreSQL, and also MongoDB. Now, what is a data warehouse? So a data warehouse functions as a specialized database designed to store structured information gathered from multiple sources, so encompassing both current and historical data. So unlike traditional databases, primarily focused on transaction processing, data warehouses are tailored for analytical purposes. So they consolidate data from different systems to facilitate comprehensive analysis, uncover insights, and generate business intelligence through reports and dashboards. So in essence, while a data warehouse is indeed a type of database, it distinguishes itself by its optimized architecture for handling complex queries and facilitating data analytics essential for strategic decision making in organizations. So a data warehouse serves as a centralized repository designed to store large volumes of both current and historical data gathered from diverse sources. This data ranges from raw, initially ingested information to highly refined, cleansed, filtered, and aggregated data sets. The process of moving data into a data warehouse is managed through Extract, Transform, Load, or ETL process, which extracts data from its original sources, transforms it to fit the warehouse schema, and loads it into the warehouse on a regular basis, such as hourly or daily schedules. 
So this periodic loading means that the data warehouse may not always reflect the most current state of the original systems. So once the data is successfully loaded into the warehouse, business analysts and data scientists can utilize business intelligence tools to connect to the data warehouse. So these tools enable them to explore the data, uncover valuable insights, and generate reports that aid business stakeholders in making informed decisions based on comprehensive data analysis. So examples of data warehouse is Amazon Redshift, Google BigQuery, and IBM DB2 Warehouse. Now, what is a data lake? So a data lake serves as a centralized storage repository for data collected from various sources, preserving it in its original or raw format. So unlike data warehouses that also handle extensive volumes of both current and historical data, data lakes distinguish themselves by their versatility in storing diverse data formats such as JSON, BSON, CSV, etc. So the core objective of a data lake typically revolves around analyzing this data to extract valuable insights. So however, some organizations use data lakes mainly because they offer affordable storage options, storing data in anticipation of future analysis. So data lakes are versatile storage systems that can handle large amounts of structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. So unlike traditional databases or data warehouses, data lakes don't need data to be organized before storing it, allowing quick accumulation of diverse data types like spreadsheets, JSON files, PDFs, and multimedia. So different users access data differently. Structured data is often used directly by business analysts for insights, while unstructured data requires expertise from developers, data scientists, or data engineers. This set of flexibility lets analysts and scientists discover unexpected patterns and insights, using the data's variety and volume to solve problems that weren't anticipated initially. So data and data lakes can be processed with online analytical processing or OLAP systems and visualized using business intelligence tools, improving data exploration and decision-making capabilities. Some of the examples of data lake are AWS S3, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, Google Cloud Storage, etc. So now let's recap the differences among the three of them. So if your application needs to store data, which is essential for most interactive apps, having a database is crucial. So databases are fundamental for applications in various industries and scenarios. They provide an organized way to store, retrieve, and manage data effectively. For instance, an online store uses a database to handle product stocks and customer orders. Similarly, a healthcare system relies on databases to manage patient information and medical histories. Even social media apps use databases to store user profiles and posts. So without databases, it would be difficult to manage and access data reliably, impacting the functionality and usability of interactive applications. Now, data warehouses are essential when organizations need to store large amounts of historical data and analyze it deeply to gain business insights. Their organized structure makes data analysis straightforward, accessible to business analysts, and beneficial for data scientists. So unlike transactional databases used daily for operations, data warehouses specialize in handling complex queries and generating detailed reports. So this capability supports strategic decision making based on past trends and patterns. It's important to know that while data warehouses excel in analytics, they are unsuitable for real-time transaction processing or handling multiple users at once. So organizations typically maintain separate databases for day-to-day -day operations and use the data warehouse specifically for strategic analytics and business intelligence. Now, data lakes are a budget-friendly way to store large amounts of data in its original form. So unlike regular databases or data warehouses that need data to be organized beforehand, data lakes allow storing various data types like structured, semi-structured, and unstructured without immediate restructuring. So this keeps data raw, letting business fully explore and analyze both current and past information, uncovering insights that may not be obvious initially. So data lakes are great for advanced analytics, such as machine learning and predicting trends, offering flexibility for experimenting with data. However, they are unsuitable for handling day-to-day -day transactions or meeting the fast data access needs of operational tasks, which traditional databases and data warehouses specialize in. So I hope now you all know how the three of them differ. Now, having known that, there are some factors to be considered before deciding on which platform to use. So let's look into those. Considerations like the variety and volume of data sources, the way data arrives, and how predictable its structure is are crucial. So data lakes are versatile handling unstructured data in various formats. On the other hand, data warehouses specialize in structured data from multiple sources. Now, databases perform well with structured data from one source, but may struggle with scalability. 
Now, the choice between these platforms depends on these factors, shaping their roles in data management and analytics. Now, in a solid data management strategy, choosing when and how to use data models is crucial. In a solid data management strategy, choosing when and how to use data models is crucial. Data lakes offer flexibility by storing raw data alongside metadata, allowing schemas to be applied later during data extraction for analysis. On the other hand, databases and data warehouses use ETL, extract, transform, load processes. Here, raw data is transformed into a predefined structure of an ingestion called schema on write. This difference shows how data lakes enable agility in exploring data and adjusting schemas as needed, contrasting with databases and data warehouses that prioritize upfront data organization and consistency through fixed schemas. Now, big data is highly valuable for businesses evident in their investments in data management. As data grows in volume and speed, storage expenses increase. Data lakes are cost effective because they store data as is, reducing storage needs compared to data warehouses that require extensive processing before analysis. Databases can scale storage capacity to match demand. Now, the choice between a data warehouse, data lake, or relational database depends on users' role, whether they are a business analyst, data scientist, or a part of operations, and their specific organizational needs. So operations teams focused on business insights often prefer data warehouses for structured data analytics, despite higher setup and storage costs. Data scientists prefer data lakes for their flexibility with structured and unstructured data, which supports advanced AI and machine learning. Business analysts skilled in SQL may find relational databases adequate for generating specific trend reports on business segments. So each option serves different needs based on data complexity, analytics requirements, and cost considerations. Now, organizations have different preferences between open source and proprietary software, along with the communities backing them. So data lakes are popular because many use platforms like Hadoop, and there's a growing amount of unstructured data from various company systems and real-time data streams. Another important point is how easy and affordable it is to update systems, and when data sources and structures change. Unlike relational databases and data warehouses, which can be expensive to update, Data lakes make it simple to adjust, making them flexible for changing data needs. So there you have it. Hope you got a clear understanding of what a database, data warehouse, and a data lake is. If you like this video, do appreciate with a thumbs up and stay tuned for more such videos. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.